a very brief introduction of VAR models and how what we need to think of when we do VAR model. When so again, we need to think of data need to be stationary. If you used a VAR model, you need to um, decide on the lag length and with the problem with the with the optimal lag length that you need to have the optimal lag length or to include the optimal lag length. We because if you have too many lags, that causes the the, the th that this means that we will have so many parameters and sometimes it will be too many parameters to estimate. So this will come at the cost of losing degrees of freedom if you include too many lags. And at the same time, if you include uh, too few lags, uh, then this will, 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 will uh, uh, you will end up having the autocorrelation problem. Okay, so y that's why you need really to, uh, to, um, to select the optimal lag length. And then you need to think of the stability of the model. You need to make sure the model is stable. And then after the estimation, then you need to do the causality test just to understand the direction of causality, going from which variable to which variable, and, and to understand is it going in one way or it is bidirectional uh, causality. And then uh, one of the most useful things that you can do with the VAR model is to produce the IRF or the impulse response function and see how uh, if there is a shock in one variable in, in the model, how this would impact or would affect the other endogenous variables in, in the model. Okay, so now we go back to the main story, stationarity. So you remember that's what we discussed last week and that's what we built on the, the, the idea of the how we estimate the VAR model. We need to use data. We need the data to be stationary. We need the data to be uh, I1 or integrate, uh, sorry, I0 integrated of order uh, uh, zero. And we explain why um, most of the data we would have in, in, in macroeconomics data or, or financial data is the exception is to have I0 or stationary data. So you would usually have I1 or I2 uh, uh, data. Why? Because economies evolve and grow over time. So you'd expect there's a trend or this uh, it grow uh, with, with, with time. So, so what is the problem of we have if we have uh, 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 or if we have a regression of non-stationary data? We explained this before. We say we would have a high R square value. You will have statistically significant regression coefficient, but this is misleading because you could be regressing two variables that they are not related, but in according to the regression results, they are related. And the only trick here, or the only problem here, is that because these two variables just move with over time so that's why you see uh, a significant relationship so that's why you see this uh, uh, significant uh, coefficient and high r uh, r squared so in some cases as well like as a, as a, as an indication of uh, uh, spurious regression you would have r squares greater than Durbin watson uh, statistics so this is something that should make you worry about the 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 sort of regression you uh, you have. So this is an example. So what we have in this example, Egyptian infant mortality rate regressed on um, gross aggregate income, something that is not related. I mean, there's no logic that would say that infant mortality, mortality <laughs> rate in Egypt would depend on uh, gross uh, income uh, of American farmers and money supply. And what we have here, we have these are the T ratios. They are significant, very significant. Okay? And also, if, uh, when you have the uh, lecture notes, just like in this, you'll see more examples of superior regression. So when you regress data that uh, variables that are not related at all, that there's no logic, there's no theory, there's nothing that can explain this relationship, but when you do this in uh, eviews or any other software you might have um, and that's what we call super segregation because you will have uh, what it seems to be a significant relationship but in fact is that actually these variables are not even related to each other stationarity so the question here why stationarity matters then so we could just put time trend and then we capture what's happened over time but this is uh, this is still a problem because where when data 
mean and variance are time variant. So when data is non-stationary, that means this observation come from a uh, different distribution over time. And this both some difficult problems for empirical modeling. So that mainly can cause serious statistical mistakes. And that is, that is, the, that, that is the main uh, problem. And this is what I'm going to explain now. So let's say this is the model we have. We have a dependent variable yt and dependent variable xt, and both are non-stationary. So both are i1, or none of them is i0. So none of them is stationary. So let's assume that these two are i1. So what's, what's going to happen here? This, what, this is the error term. Just rearrange this equation and get the error term in the left-hand side. So a combination of non-stationary variables is likely to produce an error that is i1 as well that is not a stationary as well. So what is the problem of if we have an error term that is not stationary? That is the problem. This will violate the assumptions that we made about the classical regression model. Remember, with the classical regression model uh, makes some assumptions about the, uh, the error term. And under these assumptions, if these assumptions uh, uh, are true, then OLS are blue you remember best linear unbiased estimator this is the best that's what we want but when we have a combination or when we regress uh, or when we have a regression of i i uh, i1 uh, uh, data that makes the error term i1 as well and that caused the problem first of all the error is not going to be homoscedastic error it's going to be heteroscedastic error since that the variance of the error term increase with t increase over time so first of all we have heteroscedasticity problem second we have autocorrelation problem and also the covariance between xt and y t and ut so the covariance between the uh, independent variable and the error term isn't zero so one of the assumptions that we assume this is zero it is not zero because both move over time so they grow over time so again so this is correlated with time so again this the covariance between these two will not be zero so at least three of the assumptions we make uh, uh, in the classical regression model are violated so they are not valid okay and that is the main problem this is where the the main problem comes from so again why should we care why should we worry about the stationarity again so when we regress variables that are non-stationary, the error term is likely to be uh, non-stationary too, and that will violate the assumptions we made about the, uh, uh, the OLS estimator. 